Good morning, everyone. Olaf here from LSE in Central Florida. We're doing pressure washing, roof cleaning, soft washing of the houses. Um, can be also industrial, doesn't matter to us. We also do hydroplasting, sandblasting, metal fabrication as well. So, <clears throat> this video is a video which I've taken back in 2018 in September. And as you can see, these shingles are in very bad condition until I actually start cleaning them. And so, Florida has a special condition for roof cleaning. Somehow, Boral, which is based in Lake Wales, uh, which manufactures pretty much 80% of the roof tiles here in Florida, they're very porous, so they are not very good sealed or <coughs> excuse me, uh, protected. So the standard method that you see on videos for um, the northern states where they just flood the shingle roof or the tile roof and it just runs down is um, actually not really very effective uh, for business because you're using way too much chemicals and you have way too much chemicals actually running off and potentially harming uh, the plants and everything around the house. So we came up with a solution where we actually spray in a thinner layer the SH, so sodium hypochlorite, with a surfactant, which is a lot more surfactant than what you use up north, <coughs> to making sure that we don't have any runoffs. As you can see here in the video on the left, there's a little bit of a runoff, but I think I have a total of a runoff of maybe three, maybe four gallons on this two-story 2300 square foot roof. Um, the majority stays actually in the tile and is being pretty much broken down by the sunlight within a few hours. So I'm not oversaturating roof tiles like some other competitors do um, which love to just flood and have it out all just running down and pretty much don't care for the problems afterwards. Other companies also still do that, but really destroys these tiles, which is using a surface cleaner or high pressure to actually clean these tiles. Problem with it is it's a porous material which is not sealed and not glazed. So whenever you spray something on it and you do not have enough surfactant in your mix, what happens is it actually goes into your tile, through your tile, and onto the underlayment below it. Uh, in order to prevent that, you have to have a lot more surfactant in than you normally would have. The surfactant keeps the SH on the top surface and prevents it from going down into the tiles. So, therefore, you have less of a environmental impact, you have less of a long-term damage to the tiles when you leave the SH in and you don't wash it off. One of the things um, which the association for the roofing association actually recommends to use for cleaning is sodium hypochlorite which is exactly SH. Um, we use it in our concentrated form when we transport it at up to 13 percent concentration and on site we actually do the proper mix with the water and the surfactant because every roof is different. Like this one, even for being a two-story and down being in Boynton Beach, which is just south of West Palm Beach if you're not very familiar with that area and just north of Fort Lauderdale, um, the runoff is not as quick as some of the higher roof pitches like a 50-50 or 6-12 pitch. This is very low, this is, I think it's a 10-12 pitch um, if you would pre-calculate it out. And as you can see it has multiple steps so you have a upper roof section, you have a lower roof section and in order to clean everything you have to make sure that step by step you walk around the house with a ladder. So in the northern climate the roof pitch is much steeper so you don't have to go onto a ladder as often because you can reach it with your 
um, guns without a problem from the ground. Down here in the south, the roof pitches are much lower, so much more flat. And as you can see, some of the tiles are already cracked. I didn't even walk on it yet. And so that's part of the problem. So you don't have the opportunity to shoot it just from down below. So one of the things you have to do is you have to shoot it from pretty much above. So you have to get on the ladder and you have to spray it on. Because we use so much surfactant, as you can see here right now, it all turns white. The white is actually the surfactants reacting immediately with the algae and mildew and triggers the chemical reaction of the sodium hypochlorite in the way that it does not run off as it would do without so much surfactant in it, which prevents us from having actually a high amount of runoffs. As you can see, down in the gutter, there's barely anything running off. Most of it is just a couple of drips per row, so to speak, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, we have to flood it a little bit at the edge because we have to clean the whole roof, right? So, but we only apply it where it's actually needed, so we are not the typical company which just goes out and says, oh, okay, um, we can do this small roof for 300 bucks, which is what a lot of competitors charge for just a single story house, which is like in the 2000, 2500 square foot range. As you can see, I also have my respirator on because this stuff destroys over time um, because it's such a potent chemical. It destroys your nasal cavities and your breathing apparatus. So when you work with it, have your respirator on. Uh, this stuff is pretty toxic and if you remember when you actually open up a bottle of concentrated bleach concentrated bleach is sodium hypochlorite but it's only around six percent when we work with it in a concentrated form pure concentrated it is 13 percent but because we're adding water and we're adding surfactant to it, we normally break it down and get it down to a value depending on the roof dirtiness, meaning the condition of the roof, um, from pretty much 9% all the way down to like 2%. As you can see here is another spot where you can see before and after, the before on the left and the after pretty much here on the right. Um, when you do roof cleaning, you have to make sure that you spray your chemicals in a nice um, spread out scenario so you don't create too much of a runoff. And you have to make sure that you work with your wind. So I cut out the audio on this video, but it was pretty windy. I would say we had wind gusts of 8 to 10 miles an hour, constant wind between 3 and 4 miles an hour. So that's why you can see when you're looking very close up, there are some discolorations which we did not clean in this scenario um, because we don't want the, to harm the environment. So what we do is we saturated this roof and as you see, we waited for it to dry back out. That's why our job sometimes takes longer than the competitors. But we prefer to do it this way than to just flood the roof like crazy. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of the runoff right now happening. That is pretty much the highest amount I had on the whole roof. That was on the section which was clearly visible to the HOA uh, when you come into the community. So, again, clean the roof right but don't overclean it. Make sure that you just use the right amount and not too much, especially when you're working here in the south. When you work in the north, it's a whole different story. So again, questions, please leave comments below. Uh, like and subscribe. I'll post more videos as we move forward. We just upgraded our trailer for the soft wash and high pressure wash um, rigging. 
I'll do a video about this fa fairly quickly around in the next couple of weeks to show you guys a walk around and all the details so that if you decide to go into this business um, you at least have an idea how to start and how to set up your rig correctly without um, running into situations like what I've in encountered when I was starting doing this business seven years ago actually eight years ago by now because it's 2020 and I started my business back in 2012 so thanks again guys have a good one God bless.